Wow, shivers of love, premonitions of needed responsibility. We will rise to the occasion, and these emotive stories really help us feel that, that invigoration, doesn't it? Uh, we are the stories that we tell ourselves. That's the resonant wisdom offered by our post-penultimate speaker, Dustin Angel, environmental educator, conservation photographer, who uses creative technology to build community relationships. Those are intersecting planet lines at the Archibald Biological Station, where he's the director of education. But first, our penultimate speaker, I'm sorry, I'm a college professor. I have to use those words. Um, fellow National Geographic explorer coming uh, to us from Nairobi, the founder of the Internet of Elephants, who uses gaming and game gamification to engage with our four-legged and pachydermous planet walkers, bringing them to life and building those planet lines between us and them. Would you welcome on the screen, Gautam Shaw. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me to talk to you today at Corridor Connect. My name is Gautam Shah, and I run a company called Internet of Elephants. We make games and other digital tools as a storytelling channel for wildlife and wildlife conservation. I know that today you've already heard from and will be hearing from others on different approaches to storytelling. And I've been asked to in, hopefully inspire this audience with how games could be used to tell those stories about the Florida Wildlife Corridor. And hopefully I'll manage to do that by showing you a number of different examples of how this has been done in other projects. But before I do, let's just spend a minute going through why, we're, why are we talking about games in the first place? So it probably comes as no surprise at this point that half the world plays video games, spending literally billions of hours and billions of dollars on them each year. And this transcends all demographics from age to gender to geography to income level. So forget any myths that we have about games being only for teenage boys playing in their basement. And what this means is that gamers are not some separate category of people. They are all of us and everybody around us. And further studies have shown that they're concerned about the state of the planet and have a self-expressed interest in wildlife too. So as an audience, we should be thinking about how to reach them. Now, games as a medium offer a lot of compelling adva advantages when telling stories. Firstly, they're active. Even the most passive of games require you to do something, which immediately makes you more than just an observer. Second, you take on an identity and a role within that game. And that's important because it makes you part of the story. Third, with this identity, you have agency to make decisions about what you do and how you do it, which results in you receiving feedback in many different ways about those decisions or actions, which means you can learn and get better. And games can be social. You can play with other people, but they also foster entire communities around them. And maybe most interestingly, you can measure their impact. We can understand how a player progresses, how their knowledge shifts, how their attitude shifts, what they choose to do all through the game itself. Before we jump into some of the examples, I do wanna mention that games can come in many different flavors with a lot of different nuances. And I've chosen examples that hopefully I think fall across all the spectrums that I've, that I've shown here. So let's start with something that's much more on the high fidelity and heavy narrative side of things. So Beyond Blue is a game by a company called Eline Media about ocean exploration and ocean science. And it uses beautiful and lifelike imagery to keep you engaged with the story of being an ocean researcher. Welcome to the Western Pacific. I'm Dr. Mirai Soto, and I'll be your eyes and ears on this expedition. Why are you so focused on this part and the baby? I'm hoping to follow the baby for years, to learn from her as she learns from her family. Hello, Mirai. Thanks for checking in. I like to believe in a little magic. Andre, who is messing with my whales? Now, Alba, a game by Us Two Games, takes a different approach. It's much more cartoony and playful. 
but still it tells a powerful story of feeling empowered to take actions within your own community that help the environment. Um, you play Alba, a girl that goes uh, to a Mediterranean island to visit her family and finds herself immersed in nature and helping in little different ways. Um, next game is Wildiverse, which is a game that we created a few years ago in partnership with the Borneo Nature Foundation and Gualogo Triangle Ape Project. It's a mobile augmented reality game that tells us stories about real apes, but also their habitats, their conservation, and the researchers that study them. And it gets you outdoors and puts you in the shoes of being a researcher. So most of the storyline is delivered through conversations with research characters, which were based on real researchers. And this is where we can also ask questions and get, and get input from the players, helping us measure their knowledge and their attitudes. Now, the game is actually a 3D hidden object game where you can recreate the forest in augmented reality wherever you are, and you're required to find different clues and evidence, such as dung, fruits, nests, and more, um, in, the same way that a, in the same way that a researcher might. But of course, the big payoff is finding Fio the orangutan, or Buka the lowland gorilla, or, or some of the other apes that we've already kind of included in there, which are again based on real apes in the wild and their real stories. Um, and at the time, you know, at the time we were really pushing the boundaries a bit with what, with what could be done with augmented reality. But, we were still able to create a fun way of telling the story of ape, con of ape, uh, of ape conservation. Next, the next example that we have here is called Unseen Empire. And we made Unseen Empire to see if we could take a, a scientific research project that would typically only be published in journals and make it accessible to a much larger public. An organization called Wild Crew had completed a 10-year camera trap study in clouded leopard habitats in Southeast Asia and they'd collected millions of camera trap photos of stunning wildlife that no one would ever see. So we created what I called a gamified data visualization of those camera trap images. In the game, you set up your own camera traps across the 34 actual different study sites, see some of the stunning images that they capture, and you then need to identify what they are while still, while still getting some other challenges along the way. We've actually talked with Carlton and Tori in the past about how Unseen Empire could be expanded to the Florida corridor, given the amazing camera trap work that, that's been done there as well. Right now, uh, a project that we're working on is called Fathomverse, um, and working on this with the Monterey Bay Aquarium. They have rovers traversing the ocean, capturing tens of millions of images of underwater life. And all of these will eventually get classified by AI but humans need to see it first. So we're working with them to see if we can get the public involved in doing that. Now this game has a very light narrative and it's intended to create what we're calling a blissfully productive environment to explore the ocean, look at those images and then do your best at labeling them. Um, but despite the light narrative, there is always a story of ocean science and exploration that's coming through. So as you explore the ocean, you take on different missions to try and find different animals and as you make identifications, you're also able to get feedback on how your labels compare to others within the player communities, within the expert communities, and even to what AI is thinking that something might be. But always also seeing how your, contrib how your contributions are helping science. So the game is right now in beta, um, and it will fully launch in Q1 of 2024, so keep your eye out for that. Now, while this next example doesn't really have anything to do with wildlife or conservation, I like it because it's an example of how you can do something very simple and yet get a point across. And in this case, that point is that it's really, really hard to drive a tanker through the Suez Canal. So essentially, with the click of a few buttons, you try and navigate a massive heavy cargo ship through the Suez Canal. 
And this was done in response to the container ship that ran aground in 2021 and caused all sorts of supply chain issues, I think over six days back then. Um, it's very rudimentary, but it's still addicting and it makes me think about the topic at hand and I have yet to make it all the way through myself. The deep sea is another example of something that's very simple, it's very low fidelity, it's very light on narrative, yet it's very engaging and educational, and it's made by a guy named Neil Agarwal. All you actually really do in deep sea is scroll to the bottom of the sea uh, as fast or as slow as you want. So you, you know, when you're doing this, you're seeing how deep, how deep different underwater animals live or how far they can dive while reading some fascinating facts about them in deep sea exploration. You can do it all in 30 seconds, or you can take your time like I do and really totally geek out on all the animals and all the facts. Um, either way, it's a simple yet beautiful, it's thought provoking and it's educational all at the same time. And I wanna show you this last example because it shows that you don't always have to build something new. Sometimes the most powerful way to tell your story is to embed it into something that already exists. For three years, we ran a campaign with Adidas to tell the stories of endangered animals through their fitness app, which already had 150 million registered users. So in a nutshell, using the fitness app called Adidas Running, that, you know, which you were already using if you were one of their subscribers, you could compare how far you ran each day with that of a real GPS tracked animal and quote unquote, compete against them over a 10 day period of time. We did this with an elephant, a snow leopard, a tiger, a pangolin and a mountain lion using their actual movements to calculate how far they ran that day. And while this created motivation for runners to run, we also brought in funny yet informative stories of the daily lives of each of these animals and the conservation challenges they face, as told through the eyes of those animals as if they were posting about their own runs. So I hope, I hope this helped a little to better understand the potential power of games and gameplay, but also visualize how that could come to life for the Florida Corridor. Um, the next part of the conversation is, of course, the more sobering practicalities of how to go about doing that, but I'll leave that for another time. Um, in the meantime, if you have any thoughts or questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Thanks again. Thank you so much for inviting me and all the best for the rest of the conference.